everybody we have some great topics coming on it's 12 30 on thursday it's time for the vital talk with dr sam yes 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 i'm gonna wait for you guys to come into the room we have some great um things that we're gonna talk about i'm doing a series on naturopathic cancer care or naturopathic oncology so i'm waiting for you guys to tune in we've got a lot to talk about i've got some demonstrations so come on in come on in I'll wait for you guys i'm so excited to do this this is like my thing this is my specialty so i'm very excited to do this for you guys i'm gonna give you guys like a couple more minutes and I'm gonna drink my water and I'm gonna wait for you guys to come. I am, this is breast cancer awareness. Hey there. Hydration is key. All right, so let's get started and people can join as they come in. All right, so I'm Dr. Sam Price. I am a licensed naturopathic physician. I am an expert in natural medicine. I help you bridge conventional and alternative medicine to transform your illness into wellness. So thanks for joining me. Today, we're gonna talk about naturopathic thoughts on cancer. So the whole month of October is dedicated to breast cancer awareness. So ovarian cancer and other cancers have their own month. This is breast cancer awareness month. I'm dedicating the month of October to talking to you guys about naturopathic oncology. So it's a series. So today we're going to talk about the thought process, um, naturopathic thoughts on oncology. Next week I'll talk about naturopathic testing for cancer. The third week I'm going to talk about therapies, naturopathic therapies for cancer. And the fourth week I'm going to tie it all together. Like, let's put it all together in one big um, uh, lecture, okay? So disclosure, um, I am a naturopathic oncologist, that is my specialty. I am a member of the Oncology Association of Naturopathic Physicians. However, my opinions and my thoughts and what I tell you guys about naturopathic oncology are all my own. They are not reflective of everybody's opinions and thoughts on how cancer care should go or their thoughts on cancer. So I just wanna make you guys aware of that, okay? So let's get started. All right. Um, if you have any questions, please type them in the comments as I'm going, and then I will answer them when I'm done, all right? And I also want to know you guys are here so I can say hi and thanks for joining, okay? So, we all have the potential to develop cancer, all right? There is a cell cycle and our cells go through the same process every single day, every single second, every single hour of every single week, month, and year, all right? It's a cell cycle. So what they do is a cell grows, it replicates its DNA, and then, my battery, sorry, it replicates its DNA, and then it divides, all right? After it divides and it gets old, it dies. If for some reason in the replication of its DNA process, a normal cell miscues or misfires along that assembly line and something goes wrong, it either does two things. One, it repairs its mistake, or two, it kills itself. Killing itself in our world is called apoptosis. That's what a normal, healthy individual's cell cycle would look like, all right? So it's also that normal cells are very obedient and they're ordered. They do the same thing over and over again. They stay right in their little pocket of our body. They perform their duties very diligently and they do them over and over again. All right, so here's what it looks like. This would be a normal cell. It's got green at the bottom, yellow, green, blue, right? Once it replicates itself, then it divides and you've got two cells. This one becomes old and it dies. And then you have this one and it does it over and over and over again. So let's talk about what happens with cancer, all right? Because cancer starts off with, all right, we've got our cell and now we need to do the replication of the DNA and then we need to divide. What happens is we get this. One of these is not like the other one. It looks like this. So in a normal process of cell cycle division, what would happen is two things. One, this would be repaired and it would be green. Or our body would kill it and have apoptosis and we would get rid of the cell. 
What happens in, in cancer is this cell is not repaired and it's not, it doesn't kill itself. So then this cell grows and it grows and it replicates and it replicates and it doesn't act like a normal cell, all right? This cell, instead, it would actually not play well with others. It actually damages the tissue and kills off normal tissue. It also is not ordered and it's not obedient. You know how this normal tissue cell I said would stay in its place and it, it actually performs its functions the way it's supposed to? Well, the cancer cell doesn't stay in one place. It can do something called metastasis or spread. So it can go into different areas of the body whereas a normal cell would stay put. So this is the cancer cell cycle, all right? So let's talk about um, what causes cancer or risk factors for cancer. So I'm gonna talk, it from, talk about it from a naturopathic standpoint. Linlar is one of our gurus, or our founders really of naturopathic medicine. He wrote a book called Nature Cure. Um, he was one of the docs from Europe that came over to America and taught us the therapies um, that we now call naturopathic medicine, all right? And he had three reasons for our causes for all disease, and cancer is a disease. So the three reasons, we can write these down in the box, please, I'd appreciate it, is one, decreased vitality, two, the accumulation of morbid matter and waste, so that's toxemia, and then the abnormal composition of blood and lymph. All right, so number one is decreased vitality, Number two is the accumulation of morbid matter or toxemia. And number three is the abnormal composition of blood and lymph. So let's talk about decreased vitality because I know I talk about this a lot in naturopathic medicine. We talk about the V's. Um, what is vi vitality? We call it the vital force. And the vital force is your body's inherent ability to heal itself. So if the body is taking care of itself, we call that the vital force, all right? If I had to make an analogous to something that you guys understand, I would call it the immune system. So that's a great way to think about the vital force. So when I'm talking about the vital force, it's very easy for people to understand what I'm talking about when I talk about kids. So kids are resilient, right? They spike fevers, when their body's trying to defend off viruses and things like that, they spike high fevers, they heal themselves really quickly, they fall out of the tree, they break their arm, they heal really quickly, um, they scab over really quickly because they clot really well, they're just resilient. They have little colds and they bounce back and they play and they're not fatigued and you know, they're just resilient and this is because they have a robust and very healthy vital force, our immune system, right? So why is it that they have such a robust vital force? It is not because they are young. This brings me to Lindler's second point, which is toxemia, or the accumulation of morbid matter um, and waste. So when we think about our little kiddos, we are so diligent about reading the labels of what kind of food are we preparing for them. We give them three square meals. We make sure that they're hydrated. We make sure that their process of elimination is going really well. They're pooping and they're peeing and they're doing it more than once a day. And if they're not, we're all upset about it and we make sure that they're doing it, right? We read the labels. We don't give them sugary products. We don't give them caffeine. Um, we make sure that they are healthy. We look at the ingredients when we're washing their hair and their skin and making sure that there's not toxic chemicals. We make sure that they're not exposed to um, certain smells and we make sure that they're not smoking and they're not drinking and they're not doing all of these harmful things that we know are harmful. We take care of our kiddos. Their system is pure, clean, and unadulterated, right? This is why they don't have a buildup of toxemia. This is why their vital force is so robust, okay? This brings me to the contrast, which is adults, and unfortunately our teenagers are in this category now. We don't read labels, we don't hydrate properly, we don't sleep, oh my gosh, let me think about um, sleeping. Are we getting enough sleep? No. 
our kids, we make sure that they have nap time, we make sure that they get to bed on time, they're getting eight, nine, ten hours of sleep at night, right? We don't get enough sleep, we're not hydrating, we smoke, we drink, we eat processed foods, we sunbathe, we actually get in tanning beds, we don't put sunscreen on, we're doing all of these things, we're exposed to secondhand smoke, we're doing all of these things to increase the accumulation of morbid matter and waste, which makes toxemia, which then decreases our vital force. This is the reason why we don't have an increased vital force and younger kids do, okay? This brings me to my third point of Linlar's reasons for disease or cancer, we can say, because that's what we're talking about. Linlar says the third thing is the abnormal composition of blood and lymph. Well, if we've got toxemia, then our blood work's going to look kind of weird, right? So everybody says, Dr. Price, oh my gosh, you sent me to the lab and they drew 12 vials of blood. What in the world? Yes. I am looking for the start of disease process when I'm looking at your lab work. Um, the abnormal composition of blood and lymph will actually show me um, that, hi there, Jalen. thanks for jo joining me, I appreciate it. The abnormal composition of blood and lymph will show me the starting process of disease. Your, your blood and your lymph should be balanced. Everything should be aligned. If it's not balanced, then I need to balance it. You need to balance it. If it's balanced and harmonious, then you don't have the abnormal composition of blood and lymph. Therefore, it's not a causative factor or a risk factor for any kind of disease, including cancer, right? So let me put it all together for you. So one is decreased vitality, all right? That's one of the causes. Decreased vitality can be from pretty much anything, but I do want to stress that last week I talked about emotional detoxing. And one of the things is stress and negative thoughts. And even though in the literature stress can't, you can't say that stress causes cancer, we can say that stress decreases the immune system. So if you've got a decreased vitality or vital force, it would cause cancer. All right, that's one of the causative factors for disease process, including cancer. All right, number two is toxemia or the buildup or accumulation of morbid matter and waste. All right, so let's talk about that. So that's food that you're putting in your body. We're going to talk about that a lot. I talk about that a lot um, about blood type and eating specifically genetically for you. Um, environmental toxins, smoking, drinking, being exposed to radiation, not putting sunscreen on, the buildup of toxemia. Um, one of the things I wanted to tell you guys was um, sugar. Cancer feeds off of sugar and we are addicted to sugar as a society in general. So that is one of the morbid matters that I wanted to talk to you guys about. It's a toxin right now in our system. And one of my colleagues, Dr. Donnie Brasco, actually did a wonderful Facebook Live the other day on sugar addiction. So if you guys go to her Facebook page, you guys can see her Facebook Live. It's great. It is Dr. Dawn, D-R-D-A-W-N, Psych, P-S-Y-C-H, M as in Mary, D as in Dawn. So that's Dr. Dawn Psych MD to learn about our sugar addiction, which is one of the toxemias that I'm talking about right now because we're addicted and cancer feeds off of sugar. So then that brings me to the third one, which is the accumulation, um, not the accumulation, the abnormal composition of blood and lymph. All right. So that's automatically going to happen if we've got toxic stuff building up. All right. So are there any questions? Any questions at all? All right, guys. So next week we're going to talk about naturopathic testing for cancer care. And then the third week we're going to talk about naturopathic therapies for cancer care. And then the fourth week I'm going to wrap it up and we're going to put it all together about how naturopathic um, oncology or cancer care would look. All right. Thanks for joining me, guys. I appreciate you. I'm Dr. Sam Price. I am a licensed naturopathic physician. Um, I am...
I am your bridge between conventional and alternative medicine. I help you transform your illness into wellness. Please follow me on Facebook at Dr. Sam ND. That's D R S A M M N as in naturopathic, D as in doctor. Have a great day, guys. Thanks for joining.